Use this to close more deals. If you don't have any money or anything to bring to the table, then ask them what you can do. I have investments and assets that pay me enough money that it covers all of my expenses. Network, network, network. This is what I like to call the seller's net sheet. And this is something that I typically put in my credibility packet. So when I'm at a seller's house and I'm sitting down with them and I'm at the kitchen table, I can actually show them some different options that they may have if they were to fix up the property to get it ready to sell or even fully rehab the property and get it ready to sell or to just sell it to me. And this calculates all of the costs that they may incur as well as the time that it's going to take them to do this. So let's jump right in. This is what I like to call the seller's net sheet. It's one of my favorite tools to get a seller to see that my offer is not only low, but fair. And oftentimes they're gonna say, well, this low offer is sucks. This is not a good offer. It doesn't look like a fair offer. How can you justify this offer? That's what this does. It helps you justify your offer and it helps you present an embarrassingly low offer, but an offer that makes sense. And it's no longer just a crazy low offer. Instead, it's, okay, wow, I can see this is actually a fair offer. So let's jump right into the seller's net sheet. I'm gonna walk you guys through how we fill this out and how you can use this to help justify your offers, but also show the seller a little bit of transparency on how you plan on on doing what you're gonna do with the property and how they may do if they decide to do you know, with the property as well. So very, 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 very good tool. We use it every single day when we're out in the field. Again, it just goes into the credibility packet and when uh, we're out in the field and in the opportunity presents, we pull it out and we use it. On the back side of this sheet actually is a repair estimate cost sheet as well, which can be very, very helpful but we have these together front and back or in the same spreadsheet as you're gonna see here in a minute because you may wanna use this spreadsheet, the repair estimate one, to help fill out the seller's net sheet. So the seller's net sheet, again, is one of my favorite tools. Let's jump right in, guys. We're going to do a little screen share. Guys, here we are, seller's net sheet. And what we have, have done is we have basically filled out these columns with, with calculations right in here already for you. So all that you have to do to fill out the seller's net income sheet is type in the fields that are orange and it will auto calculate the rest for you. So let's pick a property and let's do an example. So we're gonna do an example on one and this one here is gonna be one, two, three, Main Street, St. Louis, Mo 63144. And our property square foot is gonna be 1500. So we're gonna dump that number right into there. And we have our address and our property square foot. This is so incredibly simple. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the fair retail list price of an updated property in this area. So this is gonna be based on the comps and the price per square foot. So let's say that the updated properties in this neighborhood are gonna go for $120 a square foot. And just the fair retail list price of a ready for market. So not an updated, a rehabbed house. So again, this would be the top end of our comps. This would be our ARV on the high end. And this would be kind of our ARV on just a make ready type of a rehab or a light, a light update. Again, not an entire full gut type of thing. And maybe those houses in this neighborhood are gonna be going for uh, 105 per square foot. So you can see here, it, 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 it went ahead and it populated the MLS list, option one, and the option two, which is an MLS as well. So you have an update the home. This is a full rehab MLS listing. And again, that's, uh, that's a $120 a foot. Option two is your ready for market or your light rehab and your MLS listing as well. So you can see here if you did uh, a comp in the area uh, based on the price per foot of 120, you'd have a high end comp of 180,000. And if you did a lower, you know, just a normal make ready, kind of like a rental grade or whatnot, you'd have $105 and that would put you at 157.5, okay? So what happens over here is we have a cash offer 
that is calculated as well. And you can actually click up here and you can kind of see this and you can modify this as needed, um, which is really, really great. We typically like to default this down to 0.7, but we can modify that as well. And the reason that this box is, is light orange is because you wanna go back and you wanna modify it at the end. You wanna fill out this here first in the middle, and then you can come modify the percent later. But basically what we are trying to get to when we do this is we are trying to give them the, the cost and the time frame that it's gonna take if they were to rehab the house themselves and list it and do all the things that they may do versus what they would get by just selling it to us, the real estate investor or the wholesaler. So let's go fill out this sheet really quickly so we can present this to the seller and show them what this is gonna look like. So now that we are back, next we are gonna do less the seller cost to sell the home, okay? Now, these costs um, are gonna be something that we're gonna basically put in here. So 6% of the is the average, and this is the commission. So we're gonna less out the sales commission. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and put in six. It's already calculated for a percent in that sell. So now we see the 6% commission is gonna come off the top. So if they were to sell this home for 180, they're gonna to have to pay 10,800 in commission. If they were to sell it for 157.5, assuming it was a you know 105 a foot rehab, they're gonna to have to pay 94.50. And over here on option three, which we're gonna to get to at the end, these are all gonna be zeros, which is gonna be great because they're not gonna have any of those costs or any of those fees associated. So it's gonna make our offer look really really good okay so now you can see total expense out of pocket in the red right here this is going to start calculating up and adding up the sums of these costs that they're going to have to spend in order to get to that full retail number and that's another thing that we like to do when we're in the field is show them that what we're going to do right so we're going to have to spend all of these costs to get to that number as well and we can show them that investment that we're going to make here once we get through this so they can understand and again the whole point of this is to give them offers but really though really the point is to show them that your offer is justifiable and it's fair and it's not just some crazy low offer that it's a real offer and it makes sense all right so let's jump right back in so now we're going to have less price reductions and this is basically you know what you're going to have to do to get the property to sell um, once you have, you know, once you're negotiating on the property. So, you know, typically they're going to come in at 97% roughly. So let's less out 3%. So that's going to be, they're going to make an offer, you know, 5,400 less or 4,725 less, give or take. And you can modify this. So if you only think that that's going to come in, you know, at 2% less, then that's fine. But again, it's going to change the numbers down below because they're different amounts total from these numbers here. So again, typically we like to use about 3%. That's kind of the standard from when we are doing, you know, our updates. All right. So next, what we are going to talk about is the updated versus uh, a full rehab update versus the market ready, right? So up here we had based on comps for our high ARV for the updated or our low ARV, which is basically the, the ready for market, right? Or the rent ready. So when we're doing ours, our full updates, we typically spend about $35 a foot to do that. And if you like a different number, like 30 or 40 or 55, then put your number there, right? Less repair updates for ready for the market. So the light one, right? So $35 a foot for our update, that's gonna get us $120 a foot on our comps, right? Our lower end make ready is gonna be probably more around $15, maybe even 10 or 12. Let's go in here and let's say we're gonna do $12 even. So you can see here the cost to repair and update the property based on our square footage up here and our amount per foot, 35 times 15, that's gonna be $52,000. Our $12 a foot times our 1500, that's gonna be 18,000. So if they wanted to try to get 180,000 for this property, they're gonna to need to spend 35 a foot, uh, hypothetically, versus you know if they wanted to try to get 157.5, they're gonna to have to spend about $12 a foot. So those costs are 52,000 versus the 18,000. And as you can see here, option one and option two are going to be adding up, whereas option three, our cash offer isn't gonna change. All those costs are zero. So again, we're justifying why our offer, our low offer is a fair offer, guys. This is not that difficult. All right, so moving along. Next, we have our house payments. So let's just assume we have out of pocket, 
um, house costs till closing. Figure a minimum of six months for full updates and three months for light updates, right? So if we're gonna be making house payments while we are rehabbing this property, we're gonna have house payments, right? So we're gonna have, let's say, a house payment of maybe $700. And you can see this calculates times six or times three for the you know the light updates versus the full updates. So if we're paying 700 bucks a month and we have to do roughly six months of holding costs from the time that we buy it to the time that we fix it up to the time that we get it listed, assuming it sells relatively quick and we don't have a whole lot of time on the market and then we have time for them to go get approved for their loan and yada 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 the whole process of doing a full update doesn't happen quickly let's say you get it you get it rehabbed in two two and a half months it's still going to take a few months to actually get paid on so again if you are going to be doing um house payments you're going to basically be calculating in about seven hundred dollars right utilities you're typically going to have about a hundred bucks a month in utilities and you can see here this calculates in six months this calculates in three months insurance on our property is typically somewhere around 75 bucks a month so again we're going to have to include six months of insurance or three months of insurance yard maintenance okay yard maintenance we're typically going to have you know about a hundred bucks we're going to have to cut the grass we're going to have to to rake the leaves we're going to have to uh, shovel the driveway if it snows and then we have a miscellaneous right so miscellaneous a month cost just add that in there if you want to increase that up even more that's fine but as you can see here these total out-of-pocket expenses are starting to add up okay so next we have less inspection repairs so um, this is a credit and or repair cost that you are going to incur once you have a buyer who comes in and makes an offer and they have a loan typically and they go and they hire a property inspector to come in and do some inspections on the property. Well, once they return back your 45 page report, you're either gonna have to spend some money to go in and fix all those items or offer a credit. And we typically offer a credit of around $1,200 regardless if the property is in great condition or not. It just ends up happening that way. And then we, we have less our closing costs or our fees that we're gonna pay our title company. Now you'll notice that we have some some information in here in the notes that'll kind of give you an, you know a basically an average. But the fifteen hundred dollar cost is the cost for us to buy it and sell it. Um, and you can see that we just add that in on both. So let's recap here, guys. Let's recap. We have gone through this and we have filled out just a couple of things in the middle column here, and it's basically auto calculated three different offers you'd have an mls offer is if you went in and you rehabbed this home and you spent 35 bucks a foot to try to get to comps in the 120 range or if you went in and spent 12 bucks a foot to try to get to the comps in the 157 range next you're going to see our cash offer but let's let's finish up real quick and just do a quick summary of what we're really looking at down here at the bottom. So you can see our total expenses out of pocket, if we are going to try to hit the high end of the comps on 123 Main Street, that's 1500 square foot, but it needs you know, a, a high end rehab, for example, it needs $35 a foot, um, that would mean that we're shooting for an ARV of 180,000. Well, to get there, we're gonna have to spend $77,850. These are either expenses that are gonna come out of our pocket or they're gonna be deducted from the HUD at closing. So like the, like the commissions for the agent, that's not gonna actually be um, a cost that you're gonna have to write a check for, but it's gonna be less money that you get back basically, right? So you're gonna basically have out of pocket expenses of 77,850, right? So that's what we tell the seller that these, this is gonna be the cost to you to get that 180, right? So again, they may not have these expenses, but they're gonna be expenses incurred. So why not use these expenses? So you have $77,850 that's gonna need to be invested basically to get 180. Well, that's gonna basically leave you a net take home of 102,000. We'll take from out from that number right there what they owe. And if they don't, if they owe more than 102,000, then this isn't even a possibility for them. Also, the time to close with cash, you can see I misspelled that, let's add that in there, um, is 
time to close with cash is going to be six months. All right. So we're looking at about six months for them to get through this process. And that's also what we had calculated in our house payment, our utilities, our insurance, our maintenance. I think this was supposed to be HOA fees. Um, yes, all these things. So then the next column will be option two. Again, you're going to list this on the MLS. You're going to have a lot of these same expenses and you're shooting to get, you know, 105 basically your comps of 105 so again if you're in a different area that's okay guys just look at the high end comps in your neighborhoods and look at the low medium in comps right see the ones that are clean and they're rent ready that's going to be your lower end mls comps and that's going to be your arv for middle of the line then look at the ones that have fresh paint new kitchens new tile new windows new roofs that's going to be the high end of your comps that's going to be your true arv the highest you're going to be able to get for the properties in your area. And you're just gonna use a square footage um, to calculate this. It's really not that difficult. So again, on the second one, 157,500 is our ARV because we're shooting for the 105 range comps, as you can see here, and we're using a multiplier for repairs of 12 bucks. So it's gonna be $18,000. They're gonna spend nine grand here in agent commission, so on and so forth. And we get down here to a total expense of $38,100. So that's basically gonna be money that they're gonna to have to spend or are going to be um, charged somewhere down the, down the line, right? So again, this is for the 157, the option two here, as you can see. And their net take home, right? The amount that they're gonna be able to take home is gonna be 119,400. Well, how do we get that? That's 157.5 minus our 38.1. So their net take home is gonna be 119,400. And here's the thing, that time to close with cash is gonna be about three months. So they're gonna to have to invest three months and $38,100, right? To get to 119,000. $400, right? That's going to be their net take home. Now, again, from these two numbers, take out what their mortgage is. This is assuming that they don't have any debt on the property. So take out what their mortgage is. And then you can really even add, we should add a new column in here. And this should be, let's put it here. And this should be the net net, right? This is basically after their or their, let's call this their mortgage payoff or less mortgage. There we go. That's what we want. So that's really going to be their real take home right there. Now, option three, our cash offer, right? This is our as is. No inspections or no fees or you can change that to, to little inspections and very little fees if you want. But we typically, you know, do our own inspections and we come in with cash, we buy as is, we, we can close relatively quickly. So in this scenario, what we're doing is we're taking, let's see here, how do we have this calculated? We have E7, so we have this number here, that's our high-end ARV. We're gonna times that by 70%, so that number times 70%, and then we're gonna add on E21, and E21 is, uh, let's see here, E21, the, the amount of the repairs that we have calculated in here. So really, we're, we're taking out too much with this. Okay, here we go, so we're back. So we are gonna go up here and we're gonna look at our cash offer option, and that's gonna be E, let's double click on it, it's gonna be E7, so it's gonna be our full high ARV. And we always like to work off of the full high ARV, the fully updated ARV, because it has the most value. From there, we're taking 70% of that number. We're multiplying it by 70%. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna add in the costs of our repairs only. And the reason we're not adding in these other costs is because we're not really trying to make 30% on this property. We'll probably end up making more along the lines of 10 or 15%. And the difference of 10 or 15% and 30% equals the rest of those costs. So we don't have to add all those additional costs in. But the great thing is, is that actually brings our cash offer up to a number that's going to make sense for us as investors to come in and buy this property and rehab this property, right? So now we have a cash offer of 
$1,200. Now, if we go down to the bottom here, the total out-of-pocket expenses for them to get their $73,500 is going to be zero. I'm gonna pay all the closing costs. I the, Less the mortgage that they have is gonna be basically what they're gonna take home. Now, I usually don't even add this when I'm out in the field talking to people, I just give them the numbers minus their mortgage and they can kind of calculate it on their own. And I just kind of read them and just kind of see how they respond or react to those numbers, right? But regardless, the main thing here is the time to close with cash with us is in three to 14 days. And that's relatively fast for our average deal, but we can get it done if the numbers make sense. And this again is a great tool to help justify making the numbers, not just be some crazy low offer but makes sense so to recap let's review we went in we we basically put in our high comps and our ready for market comps square footage they're basically what those properties were selling for um, divided by the number of square foot and we just put in our address and our square foot here and that's kind of our base next we just filled in these here right we just filled in the numbers right in the middle in this orange column and we use some of the averages and if you guys don't like those averages you can obviously modify this which is awesome we I use this on my cell phone in Google Sheets and I also have this printed out and sometimes I'll use just a pen and a calculator and we'll go through and we'll fill this out. And really filling out these numbers takes a little bit of time, but it also helps really cement in with the seller that they're gonna have a lot of costs to get this property sold. So now let's review. So Mr. or Mrs. Seller, if you are willing, you know, or wanting to get the full ARV of 180,000 for this property, then you're gonna basically need to spend and or be you know, charged about $77,850. And your net take home from 180 is gonna be 102. So if you owe more than that, that's not gonna really be an option for you, right? But maybe it is, maybe you don't owe any at all, and maybe you have the 77,000 to, to invest into getting that $180,000 ARV. Option two, list this on the MLS light rehab. We had a rehab of $12 versus the 35 on the high end. And you're gonna have $18,000 worth of cost for your rehab versus 52, but you're still gonna spend 38 grand, right? And your net take home from the 157.5 minus your 38 is gonna be about 119.4. So, you know, that might be your best bet to get the most amount of money for your property. And I'm happy to coach people when I'm out there if they don't like my cash offer or if that offer is too low, why not use the opportunity to try to help them get the most for it? Often what that looks like is them going and fixing it up a little bit and then we get a referral for an agent, right? For, for the brokerage side of our business. One of our agents will get a referral to then go list that home. If we're already there, why not offer that, right? We're always trying to get them to take the cash offer, and this is how we justify it. But regardless, we're there, let's offer it to them. Moving on. So last but not least, our cash offer, and you can modify this one as well. And if you like the area a lot, you can even go up to 75% or even, even 80%. Whoop, went too far if you want to go and be aggressive, right? Next, we subtract out E12. So we're taking out just these high-end repairs, right? Again, if you want to modify that, you can, or you can just use your own number. But we basically did this to, whoop. What did I do? H. There we go, let's put it back. All right, so. Uh, we basically did this at you know 80% or we can go in at 75% and then we can say, all right, cool, here's gonna be our offer. It's gonna be 82,500. Now, if you wanna get 100, which is you know quite a bit more than 82, you're gonna have to spend 77,850. It's gonna sp take you six months. It really doesn't even really make sense in this scenario to do number one because they could spend 38,000 on a make ready rehab or a lighter end rehab. And they could actually get more money in less time, right? So again, if they wanted to invest the time and the money, they could do that. But we're really usually working with motivated sellers, sellers that are looking to sell right away, right? And sometimes, you know, they may want to have the house sold in three to 14 days. And basically, this is our offer. It's going to be $82,500. they are going to have to invest 
zero. And we're basically gonna have to invest all of these costs that they have as well. So they can see that the reason that we're gonna spend 82,500 to buy it is because we're gonna basically have, you know, $77,000 of costs on our end for us to go get that 180,000, right? So that is how we can justify our offer being so low because they have no costs. Whereas they would have had 77,000 of costs to do what we're planning on doing, or maybe we'll actually choose this route. But again, it doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is the amount that we'll offer them and in the time frame that we can offer it to them. So if the seller is not very motivated to sell, they don't need the money right away, then our offer may not make sense, right? And it may not have made sense regardless if we use the seller net sheet or not, right? It might have just been too low. But if they are motivated to sell and time is of the essence, they will be willing to trade you a discount for a whole lot, hell of a lot of convenience. And that's what this sheet is, is all the headaches that you're gonna have to deal with when rehabbing the house, listing the house, paying insurance and utilities and maintenance and HOA fees and seller concessions and title company fees and other miscellaneous expenses and price reductions and the list goes on and on and on and on. So if time is of the essence for the seller, this sheet right here is extremely helpful. I call it the seller's net sheet because it lets the seller see what they are going to net by selling the property to us. They can, they can take out the amount that they may owe on their own or if they wanna give us that information, we can even help them with that. But most of the time when we use this, right, when we pull this out of our credibility packet to use it, it's because the seller um, is probably not gonna like our offer because it's really low, so we wanna justify it, but also because time is of the essence to them. So this helps justify the offer being low, but it, it helps explain why, and it shows all the expenses they may have, but it also lets us show them the expenses that we are gonna have if they decide to choose this far right column and have none of these expenses, right? They can they can have none of their money invested and walk with 82,500 and then we'll take on this burden, right? So this has been a recording of the seller's net sheet. I hope you guys enjoy it. We love using this. It really helps us lock in really, really, really good deals to explain to people, hey, you know, this offer's low, we get it but here's why, and it helps justify it. I hope you guys find value in this as well. You can find your own copy of the seller's net sheet over in the free wholesalecourse.com. Go check it out. I may even link it into this video. Thanks guys.